mic's in the wrong place. Yeah. I know it feels good. It does. It's liberating. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in my husband's office. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, you can you can take that off. Tilt it down ever so slightly. Let's see if I can get my chair up higher. It's harder now to maintain a community of people, the togetherness, the shared vision, all that kind of stuff. In this period of time, we are in a we are in, we are in a tough place right now. Everybody knows that. We haven't stopped because of COVID. People are still dying of cancer, but they're not mutually exclusive. These are two problems and we have to solve both of them. And if you think about what it's like to be a patient who's just been diagnosed with cancer, you want an answer and you want that answer yesterday. I want to see the Fred Hutch cure lymphoma. And if they cure lymphoma, then I want them to cure something else that they haven't cured. <laughs> Our fiercest enemy isn't cancer. It's complacency. Urgency is critical in the research that we do. I mean, people are dying, right? No matter what is going on, people are dying. I don't want other people to have to go through what my husband did. We can't just wish for progress. We can't just wish for the end of disease. We actually have to do something that you think is impossible. You absolutely have to take risks to innovate. Timid science is not going to change the world. Do you really want to go hike all the way down this mountain and all the way up the next one, or do you just want to jump off in a squirrel suit? Fearless science is really, it's, it's pushing the boundaries of what is known. It's leaping into the unknown. I have an obligation to go as far out there as I possibly can and then some. When you think about the talent that's at the Fred Hutch, I expect them to be asking wild and crazy questions and doing crazy things. One thing about the work that I do of suspended animation, I was sort of hunting for what immortality is. That sounds like science fiction, but it's reality. What's happening in the people who have the appearance of being dead, but can be reanimated? If we can understand that, can we harness that in some way to make it so people who are dying don't? We want scientists taking risks, looking at problems that other people don't even know exist yet. I work on both pancreatic cancer and bile duct cancer, and, and I try and use model systems that range from in vitro, then 2D and 3D, genetically engineered mouse models, biomarkers, chromatin dysregulation, and really looking at different genetic and transcriptional subtypes. Cool. Yeah. I wouldn't expect anything less. <laughs> We don't want an extension of survival by, by a couple of months, right? We, we want to cure this disease. If I want to know that a cell is dormant and I want to know that it's ultimately the cause of metastases down the road, the only way you can do that is watch. So when we removed a piece of a mouse's skull, we mounted a window on top of it and actually look into its brain and then we can watch it over days, over weeks. And this has allowed us to make conclusions that we would have never been able to make without it. That is what our dollars support. The willingness to go through countless failures to achieve life-changing success. Uh, I think I'm kind of living proof of that. So I, I lost my husband to cancer. And before he died, he made me promise that I would continue to be fearless in, in science and in life. That just uh, gives people uh, patience there, uh, a, lo a lot of hope and no reason to doubt. Science doesn't work alone. It takes a village. It's all about the whole community. If you're trying to go somewhere where no one has been before, you need investment from people who are willing to take those risks. I would encourage people to fund the good failures. The track record of ideas at the Hutch turning into treatments and developments and breakthroughs is incredible. And I think that's probably the best way for our donor community to appreciate how critical it is to fund those kinds of ideas. I can't do the research, but I'm part of it because I help fund that. Just because we're not 
you know, raising paddles and listening to live concerts, you know, I think we're all still connected by the hope. Wouldn't it be incredible if our kids, when they reached my age, didn't have any friends who had cancer, didn't have any family who had cancer? That's the best gift I think I can give my world is a cure for cancer. I can no longer support anything less than total failure and total success. That's it. And if I end up in the total failure category, it's worth it. When, when big ideas hit, it changes the world.